Hey folks, this is Riker, bringing you a Diablo 3 patch 2.4 Reaper of Souls guide to a Witch Doctor build that uses the updated Jade Harvester set to absolutely crush T10 rifts and climb high up the Greater Rift leaderboards. Now this was recorded on the public test realm, so everything still is subject to change. Check back in the future for an updated finalized version of this video with full gearing options. Let's start by looking at our gear. We're going to need the full six pieces of Jade Harvester. The two piece bonus makes casting Haunt multiple times on the same enemy worthwhile. Soul Harvest gains the effect of every rune and has its cooldown reduced by one second every time you cast Haunt or Locust Swarm. And that's the four piece bonus. So that's the other reason that we'll be spamming Haunt. Locust Swarm is our other important attack skill, but it costs 300 mana, whereas Haunt only costs 50. So Locust Swarm isn't the skill we want to be spamming, Haunt is. Then lastly, Soul Harvest consumes your damage over time effects on enemies, instantly dealing damage. And those two damage over time effects that we'll be using are Haunt and Locust Swarm. So that's the base Jade Harvester set. We've seen some variants of the Jade build, but this is the one that we'll be looking at today. We're using a Sacred Harvester in order to let Soul Harvest stack up to 10 times instead of just up to 5 times. This effectively doubles its potency. Next, we'll be using the Vile Hive offhand. This makes Locust Swarm deal even more damage and gain a rune for free. What the Pestilence rune does is make the Locust Swarm spread even more, which means you have to cast it less. And that's great because we want to be conserving that mana for our haunts. Speaking of haunt, we want the Haunting Girdle Belt. This basically gives you one extra free cast of haunt every time you cast haunt. In our cube, for our weapon slot, we'll want the Furnace. This will really help take down those elites. For our armor, we'll want Quetzalcoatl. That makes Locust Swarm and Haunt deal their damage in half of the normal time. For your jewelry slot, the Ring of Emptiness will make you deal double damage against enemies affected by both Haunt and Locust Swarm, which should be all enemies all the time. For your ring, you'll want a Convention of Elements. That will occasionally rotate through the poison damage and make you deal a lot more damage then. For your other ring, you'll want a unity and equip another unity on your follower along with that follower token that makes them invulnerable. Of course, this is just for solo play, but this will double your toughness and make you able to survive a lot better because in this build, you do need to get in the thick of things. You can escape, but nonetheless, you do have to get up close and we'll explain why when we get to Soul Harvest. To further help us survive, we'll want Lakumba's Ornament. Ideally, we'll try to have 100% uptime on 10 stacks of Soul Harvest, so this should come out to 50% damage reduction at all time. Then lastly, the Eye of Etlich will give us that extra bit of damage reduction against ranged attacks. While certainly not mandatory, it is very helpful for pushing the highest greater rifts. For our Legendary Gems, Esoteric Alteration again will help with that survivability. Bane of the Trapped, absolutely mandatory. And for our last gem, if you're pushing higher greater rifts, you'll want a Bane of the Stricken. That's going to be especially important against Rift Guardians. But otherwise, if you're going through easier content that you can speed through, then something like a Bane of the Powerful works. We won't go into the specifics of what stats you want on every piece of gear, because this is still PTR and everything is still, still subject to change, but do check back in the future for a full breakdown video. So onto the skills, we'll want Locust Swarm, Cloud of Insects. Cloud of Insects is to apply that damage reduction. Again, very important to survivability. We'll want Spirit Walk Jaunt. This is something that we can use to either get in or out of situations. To deal the most damage possible, you'll find yourself trying to get in the thick of things. So you can use this as either an engage or a disengage, or even just something to help travel from pack to pack. All around, it is an exceptionally useful utility power for the Witch Doctor. Next, we'll want Piranhas, Piranado. This will help crowd control enemies, as well as let you deal increased damage against them. As for Soul Harvest, we have every rune applied. So let's just go through the breakdown on how you'll be using this. Again, thanks to our items, this effect stacks up to 10 times. So we really want to maintain those full 10 stacks. Therefore, you ideally want to be popping this when in big groups of enemies. 
that'll instantly give you 30% more intelligence, which translates into more damage and more toughness. Beyond that, with Siphon, Soul Harvest serves as a healing potion. With Languish, we'll gain more toughness. With Soul to Waste, we'll have an awesome 50% move speed bonus. It's the combination of this and Spirit Walk Jaunt that makes us a really cool and fun T10 Rift build. And Vengeful Spirit adds a tad more damage. The Poison Spirit Rune on Haunt makes enemies take 20% more damage. And then lastly, we have Horrify. And this is something that we just want to be popping in order to gain more toughness. As for our passives, we want Grave Injustice. The most important part of this is that the cooldown of all your skills is reduced by one second when an enemy dies within 20 yards. Now normally Soul Harvest has a 12 second cooldown, but with Grave Injustice you'll find yourself oftentimes being able to pop it again and again and again. And every time you pop it, it doesn't make you lose your 10 stacks. So you can be popping full 10 stack Soul Harvest repeatedly in order to clear a big pack of enemies. Of course, this also helps with all our other skills, enabling us to maintain our buffs and our mobility on that Spirit Walk. Spirit Vessel is really beneficial for pushing higher greater rifts, gives you that free revive, confidence ritual, more damage to nearby enemies, and again, the range of our Soul Harvest is only 18 yards, so this will always be in effect. Basically, all of our damage here is coming from popping Soul Harvest, not from the damage over time effects of Locust Swarm and Haunt. Those are the applications of the dot, the damage over time effect, but Soul Harvest is the trigger. That's what actually brings the pain. So the playstyle involves first tagging all your enemies with Locust Swarm and Haunt, and then coming in, popping Soul Harvest to kill them. Lastly, Creeping Death, that makes Haunt, Locust Swarm, and the damage amplification from Piranhas last almost forever. And we'll wrap up our video there, but remind you to check back in the future once the patch goes live for any changes to this build and the specifics on what stats you want on what pieces of gear. Thanks for watching, check out these other videos, and if you enjoyed this one, share with friends, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders.